hello everyone so welcome in the new video so in this video we will continue our i2c part so for this instead of arduino we will going to use this board this is actually eprom with i2c interface right and your four pins are there okay i2c sda scl and power supply and ground and as a setup we will use this three pin from the stm32 nucleo 144 board these three pins are i2c sda scl so using these two pins we will write something from the nucleo 144 board and this led is there okay pb7 onboard led is there so we are configuring this as a gpio output so to check the status or to take the decision we will simply use this led okay in this you can see uh, this crystal is also configured and these two uarts are also configured but this two uarts we will not use in this video this is for a next video where we will actually write the data okay in this epro but the purpose of this video is to check to find the address of this device okay of this memory because in it i2c you must know that one device will be master and another will be slave and you have to have the address of the slave device now how to check the address of this slave device so first thing one thing is you can go through the data set and you can go through the other resources on internet and you can find the address and second approach is you can check for all the values right so in this video we will going to see this right and this is the generated code and you can see this is the same code uh, as uh, we used in our previous videos right so for this function we are using this address for as a slave address this is the message data buff so you can see data buff is simply hello message right and this api will simply write this hello message on this address right so this is same as in our previous video and why this for is there because in our previous video uh, you can check that this for was the address of the arduino right so now what this api will do this api will simply write this message on this address okay and we are uh, using this variable ret so whatever this function will return okay it will store in this ret variable and then we are checking the content of the ret if ret is not equal to hl okay it means that this function is not executed successfully why because either this device is not present or this address is wrong okay so this nucleo 144 cannot find this address or you can say this board cannot write this data on this address and that's why this ret will be something else than the hl okay okay so simply by checking this we can take the decision okay this function is not executed successfully and in else part you can see if this this uh, instruction will execute it means this function is executed successfully so in another word you can say if the slave device is present it will execute this if the slave device is not present it will execute this okay now if the slave device is present means if our address is right then it will blink the led because toggle pin function is there right you can see and if the slave device is not present or if the address is wrong then it will execute this and it will simply write high signal on the pb7 which is our led okay so if our led will remain on it means that the, our address is wrong if our led will start blinking then it, it means that our address is right so simply i will build this code and upload this on board and then we will check okay and one by one we will change the value and we will try to identify the exact address so let us wait for the process to be completed now you can see 
building process is successfully completed with zero water error now you can see this hardware so this is the memory epro four connections are there vcc scl sd and ground and you can see all these four wires are connected with this nuclear 144 board now i am uploading this code on our hardware now simply press the reset and you can see this pb7 this led is on so definitely this address is wrong that's why this led is on now what we will do we will simply use a variable uh, uh, and we will pass different values instead of this four so our variable name is l so we will pass this l as address and this l will be from the for loop so i'm writing one for loop for Sorry, four zero l less than one twenty eight l plus plus. Okay, so here we are checking from zero to one twenty eight all the address. We will pass all the address one by one. Okay, and for specific address, if that address will match with this hardware at this uh, EEPROM address, then for that particular address, this part will execute, and you will see this LED will toggle. Okay, now let us build the code. So it will take some time. You can see code is executed successfully. Now just upload this on board. Right, and now press the reset. And you can see this LED is blinking, right? So address is between 0 to 128 now you can check for different uh, range let us say instead of 128 uh, let us give something 90 and then build the code and this is how you have to check for different ranges right and ultimately you can find the exact address so for this let us check for between 0 to 90 now if for this range if this led will continuously blinking it means that our address is between 0 to 90 so now no need to check uh, from 91 to 128 right and this is how we will minimize the range okay from minimum value to maximum value and ultimately we can reach up to the actual value right again upload the code check this now you can see LED is continuously on right it means that this address is not from this range 81 to 85 finally let us check the actual address which is 80 And now build the code and you will see that this for this address 80 this function will execute because the address of this device is 80 and you will see LED continuously blinking so this is how step by step you can reach to the final value of the address and this is for the all the device this is not for only this EPRO so if you have any i2c based device you can simply use this type of for loop for this stm32 bit microcontroller you can use this address continuously for the all these values and you can change ch check this return value compare this with hlok and you can identify the exact address address right so for this 80 You will see the output let us wait for the code to generate the hex file now you can see code is successfully generated hex file now upload this on the board 
now address is fixed you can see 80 and now just reset this and you can see we have this led blinking with interval of one second and this is because the address of this device is 80 so this is how we can identify the i2c address of the slave device in next video we will going to see how to write some values on this eprom actual hardware and how to read it back and then we will use some protocol like uart to display those content on the uh, monitor basically right because we don't have any other uh, protocol on which you can verify the data so this is what for the today's video if you like my work then please like my youtube videos and subscribe my youtube channels thank you very much